On this episode of Lumifa Classic, it's all about the V12 ignition systems. Welcome back to Loom with a Classic and if you're new to my channel I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content. Today's video is all about the Jaguar V12 ignition systems. We're going to focus on the 5.3 liter engine but both of the pre-HE and the HE. If you're new to these engines and you don't know well what's the pre-HE, what's the HE, what's the difference, is there a difference? Don't worry, I've already made some videos covering this, so I'll put a link to them down below. I've made a whole playlist all about the pre-HE and especially the injection system and that how it's pretty different. And then I made a video showing the differences between the pre-HE and the HE, but I'll put links to those down below. So we're going to focus on three major ignition systems. The Opus, the CEI, and the Magneti Marinelli. They all try to do the same thing. They all try to deliver a reliable spark to a 12-cylinder high revving engine that had pretty high compression for the time and was pretty high revving for the time. A red line of about 6,500 RPM was pretty high for that time. So how was it done? You have to think about that. The V12 came out in the 70s. And you might think, well, then it probably has points ignition because, you know, everything had points back in the 70s. Actually, the V12 has always had some type of electronic ignition, starting out with the Opus, and then the CI, and then Magneti Marinelli. So, we're going to go through the different ones. I have a few different cars that we can have a look at. I have the pre-HE V12, which has the Opus ignition we can have a look at. I have a 91 XJS, which has Magneti Marinelli that we can have a look at. I do not have an HE V12 with the CI, but I do have a Series 3 XJ6 engine in my Series 2 over there which has the CEI ignition system so we can have a look at that because it's like basically exactly the same that you have in the HEV12 that used the CEI system. So let's have a look at those various systems and see how they work and how they all try to deliver reliable spark to these engines. I thought we'd have a look at the oldest system first, the Lucas Opus ignition system used on the Jaguar V12. This is a fuel injected 1977 one. It was also used on the early ones, the carbureted ones on the E-Type, the Series 1 XJ12, and the early Series 2. So this is the first ignition system used on the V12s. It was also used on some Aston Martins and some other cars as well. And it's basically racing technology. So it comes from racing. It's being one of the first electronic ignition systems. It's pretty high tech for the time. Here's how you can tell that you have that system. You'll have one of these thin aluminum amplifiers. It either sits down here, it might be moved to an inner wing somewhere, or it might sit up here. This is the original location where it was in the beginning. However, there were some issues with them overheating because it's really, really hot down here. It's basically commonly known as Death Valley down here. So it was moved up here on later XJ cars to get some cooling air while you're driving along. The reason I have mine still down here is because I replaced it with an upgrade called Reopus. It's a company that makes new boards inside, so you just replace the boards inside and you replace the trigger in here. So everything will look stock, but it will be a lot more reliable. I've had no issues with this at all over six years, but now on really hot days sitting idling in traffic, and I've never had the ignition cut off. It's been absolutely perfect. So the distributor on the early Opus and on the later CI is basically the same. You have this really big cap with all the 12 leads around it. It's only the insides that are a little bit different. And the early ones here, when I've showed when I have this distributor apart, and if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to it up above so you can check it out. There's a big plastic ring in there with 12 rods around the side and then a little pickup. So the pickup senses those rods and it's basically like the points opening on a points ignition system. When it sends us one of those rods, it sends a signal over here, and that then sends a signal over here that generates spark. Simple as that. And then on the later CEI, instead of there being like a ring with all those rods, there's a toothed wheel with 12 teeth on it, and then a sensor that senses those teeth, and also then sends a signal to a different box, which sits up here. Instead, we're going to have a look at one of those. 
and then that sends a signal to the coil. However, on those cars, you have two coils. And we'll get into that a little later as well. But this is the early system. That's how you can tell. That's one of these boxes. This is where they sit on the earlier cars. And on the later cars, they get relocated so that they shouldn't overheat. There's also another upgrade. There's a company that makes a complete ignition system for these cars. Looks exactly like this. Looks completely stock. Looks like it's Opus, but it's Lucas CEI on the inside because it's a lot more reliable. So you can buy a whole new distributor and a whole new box and fit everything so it will look completely stock, but it will be more modern and more reliable. But I think Reopus works really well also. Here we are over at the workbench and I want to show you the two separate amplifiers. This is from the Opus and this is from the CEI. So let's have a look at the Opus first. I've opened this one up. There's not much you can see on the inside because they are not serviceable really. But there is a board in here and I've already loosened all the screws. And if I can get it out. You can see there's a bunch of components and it's all covered in this sort of silicon glue stuff. So nothing can be messed with here. There are people who have scraped all this off and figured out what's inside here. But there's no point really because you can just replace this with the Reopus, which works really well. Or you get the whole new distributor and the whole new kit that puts the stuff from in here, the CEI stuff in here, makes everything look stock and that works really, really well. This, by the way, is from a later XJ, it's from a 78, I believe. So it has the much, much longer cables on it. So this one sat up on the radiator support originally on that car, unlike in mine where it's in the V. On to the next ignition system, the Lucas CEI. On the V12, these sat on top of the inlet manifold in the introduction of the HE, all the way until they started using on the XJS Magneti Marinelli, which we'll have a look at in a few minutes. And on the XJ12 Series 3, they used this all the way up until the end of production in 1992. This particular unit is not from a V12, it's from a 4.2 liter Series 3 XJ6. But the principle is pretty much the same because I don't have an early HE to show at the moment. But insert a picture here so you can see what the engine bay looks like with one of these. What's interesting is the inside of it. If anyone has messed with a Chevy with HEI or GM products, this will look familiar because it's the same kind of module. So that's a great thing. If this thing ends up being broken, it's usually always that module because they, after a while they get too hot and they won't work anymore. There's a little bit of heat sink paste on the back and that's a vital to get these to not overheat. So if this is broken, you can just replace it with the exact same parts of it, of a GM part. It's a lot cheaper than just replacing the whole amplifier and you'll be good to go again. However, on the V12, it wasn't enough just to fit this and your regular coil. Something had to be done because there are so many pulses per second in the V12. And what they did was kind of pretty clever. It's kind of a cool idea. So on the HE, you have two coils, two of these. And instead of using them both, one of them is blanked off, but it's connected in parallel to the second one. It's basically lowering the resistance of the coal you're using. Hence, you're getting much, much more power out of it. That was a really cool thing they did. Uh, but at some point during the end of production, they did manage to get a better coil, so they only had to use one. They moved over to two coils later on the Magnetic Marinelli, which I will show in a few minutes. And on that one, they use two coils for a completely different reason. Triggering for this is pretty similar. Inside the distributor, there is a 12-pointed trigger wheel like we talked about. There's a pickup, and that just sends a signal over to this one, which then sends a signal over to the coil. So from the outside, it's very similar to the Opus. It's just more reliable, produces a stronger spark, which was needed for the HE with the higher compression ratio, and it worked very, very well. It's a very reliable system. The only thing that really ever goes wrong, if you don't count, you know, the weights and the distributor, which I've already gone through in a separate video, is that these might overheat and over time, you just need to replace that little module inside there. And they'll be good for many more years. Now let's head over to the XJS and have a look at the last ignition system.
This is a late HEV 12 to 91 XJS and it has a Magneti Marinelli ignition system. It's pretty easy to distinguish. The disturber cap looks completely different. It is not as flat and low. It is smaller diameter and a little taller. It has two king leads going into it. That's because you have two coils, one here and one right below it. You can also tell the coils are really different. It has you know, a more modern plug on it. And it's not those standard round cylinders. It doesn't have any vacuum advance anywhere around it. In fact, there's not even any mechanical advance inside. It's all done by the computer. And because you can see that these are in two separate levels, that gives you a clue about the inside. On the other distributor, it's just one big rotor going around on 12 points, just like a normal distributor. However, here you have a two level rotor. So you have a bottom level and a top level and a six points on each level. So that's what's unique about this ignition system that half of the rotor does half the engine and the other half does the other half of the engine. So if you have some type of rotor failure or maybe you have something wrong with one of your coils or something wrong in the distributor cap, what can happen on Magneti Marinelli cars in really bad cases is you can lose ignition on half of the engine. So you'll just have basically a six cylinder. And I'm not gonna go into any details on these failures. Uh, there's a lot of information online about it you can read about, but basically, if you don't notice that this happens and you've been running at high speed and you have really hot catalytic converters, you can dump a bunch of raw fuels into them. Basically, you'll ruin your catalytic converter. And if you're unlucky, uh, really unlucky that could cause a fire, but I'm not going to go into any details of that right now All you need to know is that this is all computer control. It's controlled by an ECU uh, So there are really not that many service points in here. There's no vacuum advance. There's no mechanical Anything the distributor just gets set up correctly once Rose in right position and then the computer does everything else. It is possible to fit the older CEI ignition system to these engines. The distributor will fit and all the other hardware will mount. You can see the mounting points here for the amplifier is still there. So everything will still fit on these cars. So if you are really afraid of a Magneti Marinelli like some people are and you want to fit the older system, it's completely doable. However, this car has been in the family for over 15 years now, and there's never been any issues with the system. It's always started, it's always run, never been any issues. So it's nothing really wrong with the system as long as you have a high quality cap and high quality rotor and really good leads. And just make sure you change out your spark plugs because if you have anything else wrong, you know, a bad spark plug and you create an extra load somewhere, that will put extra stress on this ignition system. So. It's just regular maintenance and there's nothing wrong with the Minetti Marinelli system at all. And that's it for this video. It's just a brief overview of those three systems. I haven't really gone into any very specific deep details. This is just an overview video. If you guys want to see more details on these systems, just please let me know and I'll be happy to make a detailed video on each system. So let me know in the comments down below if there's any of the systems that you want more information of. Just let me know and I'd be happy to make one of those videos. Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot. Anyways, until next time, I'm Adam and this was Loom with a Classic. I'll see you soon.